Oh, oh no, I just turned on the audio. You gotta do it again. Do it again. Do it again! Are, are you serious? Yeah, I'm just saying, do it again. Okay. Just when you thought there was nothing left for you to do with your night, the Revolver Podcast, Mama Hot Flash, crew is hot, always doing you right. What a fresh take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds, geeky. Bump what you heard since birth on this earth, we know that the future belongs to the nerds. There What's it going is. On, guys? <laughs> Had to do that twice because somebody didn't fucking hit the cord. Three times. Fuck you. Curse lit in the chat. Let's get him in there. The fire. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past because, like I said, the future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, your friendly neighborhood console gamer, joined by my awesome friends, the Revolver team. What's going on this morning? How you feeling, Briar Rabbit? I'm feeling awesome, man. Uh, I spent a lot of money uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know how long, but a lot of money has been spent lately. And, uh, a lot of money. That I'm hiding good, from man. my wife. <laughs> yeah, you know, you spend a lot of money. It sounds like you're getting your getting your money's worth though. What did you spend your money on, man? Nothing, nothing. I don't want nothing. to talk about. It. Don't want to talk. You can't put the evidence out there online candy? because we know that candy yeah. and strippers. Uh, <laughs> it's like that well, uh, Tom DeLonge interview with Joe Takes Rogan. Me back I can't tell you. Takes me back to my childhood. Takes me back to my childhood. Oh my goodness! You're the only person I know that can say that and mean it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, candy and fucking strippers. That is the life of the Beastly Gamer. And it was a hard life, believe it or not. So many asses and peanut brittle everywhere. Gary Diaz, what's going on today, man? I know that you had a few issues getting us started today. We're happy that you found the perfection that you needed. How you feeling this week, my friend? Feeling good. Little known fact about Beastly, Candy and Strippers was actually the name of his second album. Um, yeah. Which is that's pretty true. good that's there. True. Um, can that's I just a really start good the podcast? Album. By uh, by saying that again, I got very close um, within five minutes before we went live to literally getting on a plane um, and burning Skype's headquarters to the ground and cutting every employee. Um, it was ridiculous. Like I've never had Skype issues like that before, um, but I've now reached a Zen, calm Buddhist state. Wilson's helped me get my mind right, and uh, and we're here. Yeah, well, he never watched uh, the Tina Turner story, Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Not Thin Line Between Love and Hate, but uh, what's, in it? What, what's love got to do with it? And so there's a little part in that film where Tina Turner says, Nam yo ho renge kyo. And so I had him say that about 10 times. Everything worked out. It was really messed up. His audio made him sound like he was from the United States. And we couldn't have that. That was just <laughs> poor, unacceptable. Poor setting. It was no, unacceptable. No, it <laughs> you know, he look, you know, you see Gary's face and you hear him say, what's up, guys? How you feeling? I was like, oh, shit. What the fuck? We gotta fix that. <laughs> we need our we need our GD on the show. He started talking nice about Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation. <laughs> Loving it. He's like, have you guys seen those new PlayStation games? They look glorious in 30 frames per second. We're like, whoa, something's fucked. I was fucked. gonna hang myself from the ceiling lamp. <laughs> from my ceiling lamp. It was about to be down. What's going on, Willie Wilson? How you feeling this week, my friend? feeling good man like i said uh, i just got done with uh getting my mind right with gary i had to take him to the bus and chill him out for a minute and, yeah. You know, help, <laughs> yeah we're doing good yeah. though but i i got a new monitor this week um yeah. well uh my better half sam uh early uh early early christmas present um it showed up so i got it plugged in and i'm not gonna lie i think she's like 55 percent yeah. <laughs> yeah, real talk. We uh I've really been enjoying it, man. It's actually been promoting me to use uh mouse and keyboard on Destiny 2. Um however What is it about the new monitor that's got you doing that? Because I gotta be the way I have it positioned, I gotta be at attention. You know what I mean? Oh. I'm like, it's the angle that I'm at. Like, normally, like our viewers can't see this. Normally I'm looking this way, like at my old monitor. My new monitor is here. Uh -huh. So it's just you know I got this U-shaped desk right here. So it what just... is the what is the hurt the hurtage? <laughs> the hurtage one forty four. Yeah. Wow. So we won't be seeing you doing any more revolver skits where you say why is it so slow? <laughs> because now it's going to be a lot faster. Well, yeah. Now he's depends now on what he's you're Start like upgrade the CPU and his GPU. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm only getting one hundred and thirty six hertz out of this thing. <laughs> I, got max, I got a Overclock max. I got a max. This is for sure. Yeah. 
Well, guys, we were a little late today, but just in case this is your first time joining us, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show like so many today by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's where you are right now. Twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, Beastly Gamer. And if you're unable to see the live feed that's today or the video format that's uploaded later on in the week check us out in podcast form on podbean itunes or your favorite podcast service provider and with that welcome to revolver live fellas it's going to be a hell of a show it is uh, man i read the topics I was, today i knew it was going to be a good show <laughs> well, well let me just start us off you know before we get into the actual topics and tell you how it went for me i finished playing one of my favorite nintendo games today uh let me move this i was playing um <laughs> Mario Odyssey on the Switch. <laughs> I finished it uh, today, and I, I I started playing it. I really got heavy into it yesterday. I played about five hours, and my wife sat next to me in in blissful just agreement, bovine agreement, just smiling at the screen. I played it on the screen, and when I walked around the house, I was playing it mobile. And between today and yesterday, I probably put about eight or nine hours into it. And I beat the game. And by the time I beat the game, I had this look of wonderment in my eyes. And I looked at her and I was like, you were right. And she's like, I told you. I said, this is one of the best things ever. And she's like, yeah. And I came in here and I sat down with a big smile on my face. And I went to the topics and I saw Briar's topic. And I knew today was going to be a very, very interesting day. Now, we're going to get started and we're going to go hard. And we're probably going to go a little bit faster than usual because... To be totally honest, Gary didn't have any issues starting off today. He didn't have any technical issues. Before we get started on the show, Gary berates us individually before we get started. That's sometimes why we all look a little down. Briar's more used to it than the rest of us, so he kind of pulls it in and holds it in, and then he, <laughs> he releases it during the show. But we had to get our, our weekly beratement. Yeah, that's, he's, show him the glass, Briar. Well, uh, it's empty we, now. <laughs> it's empty now. You guys missed the first 15 minutes. So we're going to get started, and hopefully you guys will enjoy the show as much as us. What is going on, guys? You guys got anything you want to share about this week before we get started? Uh, yeah, real quick. It's funny that, you know, the uh, the Yobo got in the way there, and you oh, had to move it. It was on top of the switch there. But uh, we had a couple of feedbacks that I wanted to uh, oh, let's talk go. about here, and the Yobo kind of made me think of this one. Um it says, Revolver is a great podcast that has a perfect balance between funny and, f- and informative conversation. Plus, I'm still amazed Beastly has a toaster that plays NES- SNES games. <laughs> and that's from Vance883. Thanks, there Vance. it is, in its glory. <laughs> Look at that boot up screen. Rare. Look at that rare title. Look at that rare. Mm. What game we yes. got in there right now? Danky Kang? Donkey Kong. Always. Danky Kang. It's going to be fun to edit that out. Yeah, HD audio. <laughs> HD audio. <laughs> HD audio before they even made it. It's the real deal. Bat- uh, well, I'll, 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 let me make a joke, though, but be totally honest. The battery uh, lifespan on this is a lot better than this. I charged this up about two months ago, I swear to God. So it's all that girth. It means something. Ladies know girth means something. And you here that girth. Six over there. Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, we got one more here that I wanted to read from uh, Omega Ra, which we all oh, know. Yeah. Who's yeah. Oh, yeah. Says, if you want highbrow entertainment that makes you think, this is not the podcast for you. <laughs> but if you want to laugh, relax with a mild homoerotic vibes <laughs> in video games, you must listen to the podcast. Nailed it. Briar, <laughs> Beastly, Wilson, Gary are an epic crew that make me laugh out loud on my commute. Fuck them like Big Bird. Hashtag bag of dicks. Hashtag Beastly, Beastly was wrong. Was wrong. And that's clearly a long-time listener if you're popping yes. all those hashtags. So for much sure. love. Thanks for the for reviews, sure. guys. Again, don't forget to leave us reviews. It really means a lot. Um, we're going to start reading them out as much as we can. But yeah, the, um, Thank you, Megan. Thank so. you guys so much. The, the growth on the podcast has been fantastic. So thanks, guys, for really drilling down and, and listening to us on there and giving us a chance with your uh, your, your time. Um, we actually, I think we're up to about 130 followers on Podbean. So subscribe follow um and a, a hell of a lot more on itunes so yeah if you're if you're stopping by as i said leave something funny on the review you might get shouted out and give us a follow um i mean it will take at least two or three weeks before we disappoint you so you know you've got, <laughs> you you've got, got some, some time. time there for it to happen <laughs> high turnover we got high turnover and listen high turnover 
<laughs> exactly. We've got to fill the levers. You know, we're losing people at a record rate, gaining them well. But Wait, do they just talk the... about dicks every week? <laughs> every single week. Hey, look, every week. Every if we week. could get rid of ours, it'd be that easy, but we have to live with dicks. Let's talk about <laughs> dicks, actually, before we jump into the show proper. This has been the longest intro we've ever had, but I've been harassing a company now for around 10 days. Uh-huh. Um, dicks by mail. Um, now, these guys, uh, I'm promoting them for free now. They don't even sponsor us. Uh, dicks by mail, you can you can go onto their website and send people bags of dicks anonymously. Um, <laughs> they're a perfect fit for Revolver. We need everyone here who enjoys what we do uh, and also enjoys bags of dicks to get in touch with Dicks by Mail. You can get on them on Twitter. Tell them to hit up Revolver because we've sent emails, we've called. I've sent pictures of my own penis, you know, as tried to. <laughs> That's why they didn't call it. back. Shit, they haven't called back. Yeah, as I was gonna say, um, you should have let Beastly send a picture, man. You can't say no to that thing. I didn't want to scare them off. Okay, I wanted to Fair give point. them something that wasn't going to intimidate them. It went safe. You're right. Makes Oklahoma, sense. Oklahoma, yeah. Oklahoma. Safe word. Yeah, dicks, dicks by mail. Uh, if you can hit them up on Twitter and tell them the Revolver crew want to talk to them, please check your emails. I'd really appreciate that. All right. Uh, all right. Let's talk. Of let's talk. What do we got? The big swinging dick. <laughs> topic one. Whose topic is this? I want to say, is this is this your topic, Gary? Is it the Xbox? Yes, yeah, the Xbox, Xbox One, one is X the is the new dick. big swinging dick. Dick, dick. Xbox One X is the new Sublime. big swinging dick. So <laughs> the reason I want to talk about this week is before the Xbox came out, um, it was really just a meme box. You know, it was the best pixels, the best pixels. Like, that's all people used to say about it. Like, you know, what's it going to do? Like, it's going to come out. It's just going to be PS4 Pro with a more expensive price tag. And I feel like since its release, there's been article after article after article where it has thoroughly trounced the PS4 Pro for visuals, for performance, for load times, um, for multimedia um, capability, both like Dolby Atmos sound and the 4K Blu-ray capability. I just I don't think you can get a better console right now. And I feel like if Sony people aren't worried about it, they should be because all Xbox needs is a killer 2018 for them to really start to regain ground lost to Sony. If you are not a PC gamer, there is no better place to play at the moment than Xbox One X. What do you guys think about it? Have you been watching the coverage? I, I, I actually have. Go ahead, Burr. I, I have been watching the coverage, and you're right. It's like if you watch, uh, I mean, basically, what's that website? Uh, Digital, Digital Foundry. Foundry. Digital Foundry. I mean, they've been just raving over the thing. Like Graphically, it is running at native 4K on a ton of games that the PlayStation 4 Pro can't touch. Mm-hmm. But can't come close. The problem with the Xbox One X to me is the library. Yeah, it runs multi platform games as good as can be on for a console. Like it's clearly the most powerful console. And if you are concerned with multi platform games, it's definitely the console they have. But it doesn't have any exclusives. Like there's just nothing. There's nothing. It's got Bro- Horizon. It's got it's got I'm sorry, Horizon. It's got uh, Forza. <laughs> It's. I was thinking of Forza Horizon. Gears. Forza, is it Wars Four? Gears Halo came 5. out last year. Halo Five came out two years ago. Two years ago, but it runs in 4K, Briar. Yeah, and, but it's a two-year-old 16. game. It is. I got a friend um, in Resolute um, Monk. Actually, he went out and bought an Xbox One X and was playing Halo. And he's like, "Man, I just can't believe like how much more fun this game is." That like close to a pc resolution you know what i mean with it is a pc um, resolution. yeah man he's he's really loving it everything that i've seen from people that i know personally that that, that have gotten one are absolutely adoring it they're loving it yeah um <clears throat> i've heard several reports that the os is better but it's <clears throat> i'm sorry the, like the dashboard os is better it is it's but faster. it can still it, yeah i could still need a little tweaking though for i've heard it's confusing now though well, yeah. I mean, it's a, they're all it confusing at first, you know I mean, what I mean? I, like, I think that the Xbox OS is doing a lot more for gamers than PlayStation do. At least with the Microsoft system, you've got the compatibility between PC and your console. So, it, you know, if you want to talk to people on party chat, you can invite them from a desktop. You can talk to them through a desktop. There's that synergy that you just don't have the option to do on PlayStation. Um, you know, I think there's it's a thriving ecosystem. And the thing that I wanted to draw to life is all the quality of life improvements. You can talk about exclusives till the cows come home. I think it's an easy argument. But isn't to that make. what a console's for, Gary? Is the yes, game? It's like great. It it's is. got it's got awesome chat. It's got amazing UI. It's got 
uh, you know, it's it's got the best microphone that comes with a fucking console ever, but it's got no fucking games. It, it hasn't Not right yet. now, but I think you're looking at a current state. So I think they're laying the. F- I feel like Xbox are building a strong house and strong foundations, whereas Sony have. Effectively, I think the house is almost a house of cards. Uh, and the reason I say that is they've paid a lot of money for a lot of good first-party developers and quality games. But the hardware and the, the lack of functionality and the lack of user-centric abilities, I think it's going to start showing its I think you're um, crazy. I think you're, you're, you're making a false argument here. I mean, How so? Because it, it doesn't matter to me how powerful one, one system is over the other as much as who's got the games I want to play. And Sony, time and time again... Has the games I want to and play, and I am not a Sony that. fanboy. I am yeah. not a Sony fanboy. You guys know that about Sony. me. Yeah, like I like if Xbox is doing something right, I like to call them out, and I do think this is amazing hardware. But they're not backing it up with the games, and they're not even announcing games. Like, true. Yeah, well, I feel like 2018 is going to be the deciding year, and the, the kind of like I said, the reason that we're building to it is you've got backward compatibility which is it's being accelerated at a crazy rate which sony aren't touching it's trivial things like being able to change your gamer tag you know that's something that sony still won't do which i'm sure can't be that difficult to work out game pass xbox game pass is superior in every way to playstation now that just absolutely knocks it out of the water everything's there the console is the best console on the market. I just feel like if 2018 hardware we see wise, food, yeah, hardware wise, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So like, I feel like these companies, like every three or four years, like they leapfrog each other. Yeah, you know, do. it was Xbox 360. Now it's PS4. You know, that's you know now Sony. That's X. ruining the day. Microsoft's time is coming. Like it's only inevitable. They've got the big gun. They've got the cannon. They just need to load it, so to speak. And I mean, like, mm-hmm. I guarantee you, they'll be announcing some games soon. But like. You know, if I wasn't already on PC, you know, like I would be looking at this as a as a viable option for purchasing a console. If I didn't have a console and I was going just from based on from what I've seen reviews from what I've read about, this would probably be the console that I'd pounce for Um, with it having the backwards compatibility and a huge library of games and stuff like that, because not everybody maybe. You know, there, there's still a lot of people out there who have probably never owned a Microsoft console. You know what I mean? And I think this would be a pretty good time to jump into it. But overall, like where I stand, like currently, I'm just like, it's cool. It's awesome. It's definitely the most powerful console on the market currently. But like, I've got a PC, so it just doesn't interest me at all. Yeah, now, it needs those games not prior a PC to talking gamer, about. Even if you're not a PC gamer, it's like, if you're sitting there and you have an Xbox One or an Xbox One S, maybe you have a PlayStation, maybe you don't have a PlayStation, maybe you're a PlayStation gamer and you're looking at the Xbox One X. But it's like, what the fuck am I going to play on it? Like, yeah, if you're buying a brand new Xbox One X and you've never had an Xbox before, you can you can dig into that that back catalog and get unbelievable versions of Gears of War four and Halo five. I mean, just stunning stuff. If you have Quantum an Xbox break, One or an Xbox better, yeah. One S right now, and you're you're making a decision, do I want to buy a five hundred dollar Xbox One X, a four hundred dollar PlayStation Four Pro, or like start saving toward a PC? To me, the, the option. The Xbox One X is the least attractive option because the, you're already going to be able to play all the games that come out for the Xbox One X at lower fidelity, obviously. With If you buy into either one of the other two platforms, you get access to a huge library that you don't have access to on the Xbox One. Well, and that's not really true on any other platform. If you're looking at the Xbox One X, yeah, you're going to be able to play third-party tile, titles on a console at the, you know, it's definitely the best, con- definitely the most powerful console out there. But it's not offering you access to a library that's not available in any other location. Well, let me let me chime in on this real quick because uh, I was sitting in the office earlier today. We watched uh, Digital Foundry's like review, their latest review of what's going on with the Xbox One X, and I want to address uh, Gary's uh, thoughts. You're right, Gary. It, it is an incredible piece of hardware. Uh, they they do trounce the PlayStation Four Pro as far as. Uh, overall, uh, uh, the way the games look and the way that they're running, they, they are hitting native 4K much at a much more frequent pace than the PS4 Pro. As a person who owns the Xbox One X, I mean the Xbox One and the PS4 Pro, I, I, I was trying to decide. I was looking at you know the prospect of buying one. I mentioned to you guys was something I was thinking about, and I turned on my Xbox yesterday for the first time in a long time, and uh, that's how I knew that new UI was there. But I was looking at my library and I was like, which of these games would benefit from the xbox one x and then i looked through my games i got halo i got you know all these games and i was like but i don't really do i want to spend 500 dollars just to make these games look better and it just 
it made no sense to me. I mean, I, I do appreciate the fact that Microsoft has brought out the big guns, but as Wilson said, there's nothing in it. They're shooting blanks. They're not even talking about games that are centered around the X. All these games are base Xbox One games with a, a, a high fidelity uh, update or a patch that goes with them. If you got this kind of power, I want to see what this power can do by itself. And, and for me, having games like Horizon and, and games like The Last of Us and you know these PlayStation exclusive, Ratchet and Clank, these things are are synonymous with the brand. To me, that's what makes a difference. All these social aspects that Gary talks about, nobody goes to Game to GameStop or goes to Best Buy and asks about, can I talk to people on PC? Or can I, you know, what about the UI? People don't care about that in the real world. It sounds fun on paper. But people don't care about those aspects of a console when it comes to the moment of purchase. They want to know what games are on which console. What games are people talking about? Which games are exciting? Right now, when you look at the Xbox library, there's literally maybe one or two games down the pipeline that people are excited about. PlayStation, on the other hand, they've they've already killed it with exclusives this year and last year. And they've got a, a just behemoth lineup coming still. It's like a steady stream of games you can't play anywhere. And when you think about how micro, you said Microsoft is kind of bringing in this PC aspect with the Xbox One X where you can you know do voice chat with the PC. They're also playing their games on PC which is taken away from people needing to buy an Xbox. They're also talking about bringing Microsoft games to other platforms, which is in, in turn going to hurt their console uh, in the long term. So to me, they're hurting themselves. I love the console. I think it's an awesome piece of kit. I think it's attractive. I think it's powerful. I think that these games on it, when you look at the multiplats, yeah, you can see a difference when you zoom up. For, I mean, yeah, when you zoom yeah. up and look, but in play, I don't like, you know, my wife, she plays. She was like, in play, I don't know if I'd notice that. You know, we were talking about this morning. You you probably wouldn't notice it in play. PS4 Pro does a full 4K presentation, but on a 4K TV that's an LED with HDR, it still looks amazing. Between uh, upscale 4K and 4K, and not just that. I mean, my point around the Xbox is that we are dwelling a lot on exclusive games and for people that just want the best looking games a lot of people don't care that much about exclusives you know the general but if you're what just the looking biggest... for the best looking games aren't you just going to get a pc no because you might be the, the couch gamer you know the person who buys fifa madden cod battlefield you know battlefront all those games are going to always be out on the xbox and all of them are going to look best on the xbox this excluding console PC. seems like it's ne- marketed to such a narrow group of people like you you have to be pretty much a hardcore Xbox guy to really look at this and true and not a PC gamer. Like if you have a PC, then you're not you're not seriously considering the Xbox One. I can't imagine. Like it's just it's so narrow the focus on this thing. Mm. I, I, I just think feel like they're a, setting a, you know an exceptional piece of kit. That's kind of all. You know. I feel really like they're nice setting it they up. Had, if they had any. If they had any games that like I couldn't play on my PC, like, and I'm not upset, like I don't even think that's a big problem for Microsoft. To be honest with you, the fact that they're selling me a game on Windows or they're selling it to me on the Xbox doesn't really matter to me, and I don't think it matters much to them. I think they're happy to sell me the game no matter what, and I'll I I just assume play it on my PC, then play it on an Xbox, um, because I could get you know I could get higher frame rates and better graphics on my PC. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I only brought it up because we're talking about the console aspect of it. And I think that and one thing that makes the PlayStation so attractive and, and the reason we're talking about this and we're talking about exclusives is that PlayStation exclusives aren't on PC. You have to have a PlayStation to play them. And, and, and that makes sense when it comes to the console business. And I think that ultimately when you have these AAA titles that come to the Xbox and you can get it day and date on PC, it's hurting the console business. You're working against yourself. That was my, my thought on it. I, you know, I have a little PC, and when I play games on here, they look better than my PS4. So, I mean, my PC is capable of doing that. I understand that aspect, but if you're working, you know, towards building a console business and you put your games on another platform, you can ultimately hurt your your business in the long term is my point. Yeah, I just kind of feel like as much as, like, I'm, I mean, I used to be a huge Microsoft Xbox fan back in the, 360 days i mean who wasn't you know i mean other than the thing breaking down all the goddamn time yeah (laughs) but um i am kind of being hopeful here i'm hoping like that this is kind of like they're setting up for something big you know what i mean because if they do get the game titles that are desirable not even exclusives just if there's new games that are going to be coming out they're gonna that that's where it's going to look the best and that's going to be um 
potentially a trendsetter. Like I said, I mean, this could, it's either going to be make it or break it. Either this form of upgrading consoles every couple of years is either going to flop miserably or it's going to set the new trend. They just need and to come out with some games, man. They just that's need to true. come out do. with some games. And I think, I think once they do, and I'm hoping that this is why they're doing this, is that they're kind of going to start setting up for development. Because, I mean, if you look at it this way, I mean, the console just came out. I'm sure devs for games have had it for a little while, for quite some time now. But, I mean, if you want to unlock, like, the true full potential of a system, that usually doesn't come for a while. You know what I mean? I feel like true. the game would have to be developed from the ground up. And Phil Spencer's in been leading that team for what two, three years? Yeah, around that. Yeah. So it's time. Like, if he's been like you know concentrating on getting devs to work on there and you know bringing people on board on the Xbox team, I think this E3 it's time to start seeing the results of that labor. And if not, I think the Xbox One is an empty promise. Yeah, it plays it plays third party games as good as a console can, but a lot. You know, not as good as a PC, and the PS4 Pro looks almost as good, but you also get to play Last of Us 2 and God of War and, you know, all these other games that are just exclusive. It's just, it's it's a tough place to be in for X- Xbox if they don't start putting out exclusives that really kind of, and they don't have to be exclusive to the Xbox. They could be just exclusive to Microsoft platforms. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I mean, if I saw those kind of trailers, like what we saw at Paris Games Week, a lot of those trailers I saw just kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is a must play. I can't remember really seeing that, you know, it, in the last few years for Microsoft. I want to see them get these developers, these writers, and, and craft something from the ground up made for, you know, the, the Microsoft platform, PC last, and Xbox. The last Microsoft I was really excited for was Cuphead, and I don't think there's going to be a big difference on the Xbox One X for that game. <laughs> no, Probably you not, no. You, you... You have got exclusives. I mean, I don't want to dwell too long on the on the first topic, but if you go flick back to the E3 that we just had, I mean, how many exclusives they drop? It? A crap ton of whether they're timed exclusives, which Sony's guilty of doing exactly the same thing and calling them exclusives. Sure. Um, you've got Sea of Thieves coming out, which looks to be pretty good. Uh, I think that's going to be a solid title. Um, you've got PUBG, which is possibly a year exclusive, which is going to be solid relevancy that for them. That could be much yeah. better, much improved by being on more powerful hardware too. I, th- yes. I think, Oh yeah. I yeah, think there's sure. stuff, I think there's stuff coming. Uh, and I think that there's more on the way, you know, we haven't seen what the new gears is going to be. We haven't seen what the new halo is going to be. There's things that are there. So I think we can't count them out just yet. Um, you know, it's I'm, I'm pretty confident. unfortunate timing that they brought this console out and they didn't have anything to play. Although PlayStation did the same thing last year, but lucky for them, I think they had Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon and, saved that, yeah. Like yeah. loaded, it wasn't. Down. It didn't come out, but like yeah. right with the console. But it came out somewhat shortly after. If Crackdown, I don't think Crackdown's going to be a Horizon though. You know, no hell no. Do you know no what, what? What interests me about Crackdown is it wasn't. It was looking really good when it first came out, like when it was first previewed. Recently, it was looking less good, but then the game was pushed, what, a year, 18, sort of eight months, um, to be given more time to cook to get back to where it was. Um, so that's good. I think that Crackdown could potentially deliver on its early promise. I mean, I don't want to get, you know, this is not an Xbox podcast, but it's, you know, at least to me, I feel like the One X is going to be the secret source that I think Xbox needs to, to kind of push forward and, and really achieve its potential. So uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll they got a lot to prove to me. They got a lot. I, I would prove. I would agree with Gary, but only time will tell, and they do have some work to do to obtain that goal. But like, with the question being, Xbox One X is it the new big swinging dick? Can we all agree that it is a big dick? It's just not quite swinging yet. It's swinging, but it's it's got nothing to swing into. It's the blood is flowing to it. It's kind of unfolding slowly, ready for action. You know, that's kind of the <laughs> state we're at. There's, there's, you're going to have to kind of slightly adjust it in the trouser just for comfort. I feel like that's where Phil is right now. It's it's swinging yeah. in the bathroom alone when it should be swinging in the bedroom with three beautiful ladies around it. There are no ladies, at least nothing we've heard of recently. So hopefully Microsoft has some ladies on the way. They made some phone calls. They got Not any birth- exclusive ones anyway. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> talking about console exclusives. There was a big Nintendo exclusive out this week, and I think it has divided the podcast like never before. Divided. Um, divided. We stand divided, divided, but I feel like we could come together with discussion and reasonable and rational talk and just work through this. Fuck As that. I, I do not like Mario Odyssey. I just don't like it. Like, here's the deal, right? Is I'm playing it, 
and I get that feeling of playing a Mario game. The problem is it doesn't hold my attention a hundred percent, but it's also it's not it's not light enough and breezy enough that I can kind of play it while I'm on the couch, like half watching a TV show. Are you like, crazy? It, it falls in this weird middle ground. Like I can't, I I can't like fully concentrate. I get bored. Uh, it doesn't like there, there's no story. So like stories out of it. Um, I, I do prefer playing it on a TV because I feel like I can, I can see where I'm supposed to jump and like, you know, kind of that stuff a little bit better. But when I'm playing on the small, uh, switch it's too much camera control bullshit like i feel like we've moved past that camera control system like i, ju- I just want that to go away <laughs> i don't like, get it what do you mean camera control system you well, control the camera with the analog yeah i'm constantly moving the the analog stick uh and it's not comfortable for me because it's like it's too close to my palm and it's it's too far down so i'm constantly like doing this if that makes sense, uh, it's not a comfortable yes. controller, so I far prefer playing on the pro pro controller. That the motion controls drive me fucking crazy. Like, and you can turn yeah. them off, but they don't fully go away. You know, like there's certain things you can't do if you don't use motion controls, and they're duplicating buttons on the on the controller. So like, there's no reason for that. You know, like why why can't we just have like some of these things mapped to, you know, a button? But really, the thing is, is it just it, it falls in this weird middle ground. It's not, like, new and inventive enough to, like, really excite me. It feels like an old Mario game kind of updated for the new age, and I think it's successful at that, and I see why people like it. It's definitely charming, and it definitely is beautiful, um, but it's it's not engaging enough to keep my attention by itself, but it's it needs too much attention for me to... Like, if I was playing, like, a su- new Super Mario Brothers... 2d game on the 3ds i could just play that and like kind of be watching tv and playing that and then put it down when i want to this game doesn't really allow you to do this it needs to, it needs more concentration than that so it's, it's really kind of fallen into a middle ground where it's just not for me uh, and, and that's respectable I, I remember in our old podcast beastly thoughts uh one of our old co-hosts robbie said that he did not like breath of the wild and we all shit on him so we shout shit on you uh, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I completely disagree with you here. I wrote a fucking sermon about this because after I got done playing the game, I just felt motivated and, and excited and intrigued. I think that Mario, Super Mario Odyssey is an evolution of every Mario game ever created. I think it goes further than every single one. Uh, upon completion of the game, it is my favorite Mario game. Uh, I did find it. That, that I was able to play and stop and, and continue to do other things and kind of have, you know, my iPad next to me. I'm listening to Tucker Carlson, the, the greatest news anchor of all time, while I play the game. And I'm kind of in between both worlds. I was enjoying it that way. You do spend time. That was uh, the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Damn. But, but, but you did just say that Mario sucked or you didn't like it. But these are my these are my thoughts on the game. I wrote some stuff down. One of the best mobile games I ever played. You said you didn't uh, like it. You, you weren't able to control and articulate Mario the way that you want it to. I'll just remind you that the screen is much larger than the the, the uh, Game Boy Advance. I mean the the Game Boy Nintendo 3DS XL Game Boy. Uh, so this is like one of the larger screens. The screen it did help playing it con- on a it did help playing on a TV, but I think that was more because I had the Pro Controller. But there were a lot of times where I really had to manipulate the camera just to see where the ledge was that I was supposed to jump off. And there were a bunch of times where I just fell off that ledge because I thought there was another foot or two. Like, I had a, another step or two. Right? Yeah, those because you're walking straight forward. Um, you can't see it from the side. So you, you kind of just, like, trusted that you know where to jump. There's a bunch of that for me. Yeah, for me, I mean, it felt the same way in Mario 64. Even though in Mario 64, you actually had to use little yellow a- arrows to move the camera it's an open world kind of 3d adventure. You're going to have to move the camera around to see where you need to go. Uh, and that could be a problem, you know, especially if you want to play like a 2d, like a 2d type of Mario experience that doesn't come into play at all, but there are callbacks to old Mario games. That I thought they'd done in genius ways. Uh, there's many tunnels where you go into the tunnel and you pop out into the a 2d world. a la Mario one. And you'd have on the same outfit you're wearing in the world. And you, you go and you get stars. To me, that was an incredible throwback. 
they got little side games and things that you can do that reminded me of Mario 3 where you go into a door, you talk to a person, and you engage in a game. And if you're good enough at the game, then you can get another moon. Um, these are my thoughts. And, and I, at I the end of this, I bored by like every conversation I had, though. There was no like yeah, nothing well, engaging. Like I felt like I, I was, it was mandatory for me to stop to talk to people, but I never felt like I like I got any insight or learned anything or I, I just felt like I had to do this to progress. I, I, I talked to very few people throughout the game. Uh, there's a lot of characters uh, sparse throughout the world that have little, you know, icons above them you can talk to. And usually if you talk to them, they're going to lead you to where you can get a moon or something. A lot of those people I went by and, and, you know, kind of left it alone to it just to kind of streamline the game and get through it. Um, but, here are my thoughts on it. And after I get done with this, if, if we disagree, then we're just going to have to disagree. To me, it's one of the best mobile games I've ever played. Uh, having something like this on the go really blows my mind. It's the deepest Mario game. There's hours, tons of hours to play. After you get done beating the game, you got tons of new stuff to do. It looks great on the mobile screen. I had no issue getting Mario to do exactly what I needed him to do. And that's where we kind of differed there. Me having these controllers, this is the most comfortable I think I've ever been playing a video game because it was docked. I didn't put the controllers on the controller little uh, box. I had them in each hand and I like had one hand behind my head and I was like, <laughs> had the other one over here and I was playing the game like that. And by, you know, after so two or three hours, the pro controller, you didn't need it. No, I don't even have a pro controller. I played it like that and I was completely relaxed and I, you know, I kept, you know, talking to my family, my kids are around. And, you know, my wife is there, my, my daughters. I said, this is the most comfortable I've ever been. I'm pulling off these crazy trick moves and stuff. So that was really, really awesome for me. The motion controls work fine. I do think that they need some tuning. Some of the stuff doesn't work as well as you'd like. You have to do these circular motions to make Mar Mario have spin. Have they ever have motion controls ever worked mm -hmm. as well as you want them to? Or would no, you always no. rather have a button? I, I would always rather have a button, but there are people out there who want that extra degree of play the extra like you know, breaking the fourth wall bring it into your to your home mm -hmm. and if you got a console that's capable of doing all this stuff you know you got a mobile console that's also a, a, a regular console for home you got motion control capable controllers with the most uh impressive rumble packs ever you got all these different ways to play and they, they try to include it all and to me i say kudos for that because like you said, you can disable a lot of the stuff that you don't want. But for me, 95% of what they put in the game made sense. Uh, the way this game is presented, there's tons of retro callbacks, 2D Nintendo Mario segments. There's RC cars and mini games. Mario's abilities while uh, taking control. Uh, Mario's abilities, abilities while taking control of other enemies is, to me, one of the most incredible parts of the game. So Mario has his hat, which is actually a ghost. And he throws it at these enemies. And they have, like, every major enemy from like every Mario game in this game. Like the football players from Super Mario World, all these different players, these characters are in the game. And when you throw the hat, you can assume control of these enemies. I and they say, I feel lied to here. I was promised a battle, and this has been the most civil bullshit I've ever <laughs> seen, man. There's been no mudslinging, Gary, no Gary. nothing. I've been waiting for 10 minutes. There's been no Gary. insults. No one's called let, each other a dick. Let, let me just say like this, Gary. I'm not, I'm not going back to Jeff. All right, so... <laughs> you know what, um, here, Here's the thing, right? It's like I kind of knew going into Mario, Mario's not really my jam. Even going back all the way to the NES, you know, like I, I, I respected Super Mario for being like an amazing step forward. In, trendsetter. Yeah, totally a trendsetter. But when I talk about my favorite NES games of all time, it's not even close to the top of the list. I, I don't care about Super Mario, Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3. I recognize them all as being amazing games. But when I talk about my favorite games, it's Bionic Commando. It's... Uh, you know, Contra, it's, you know, all sorts of other games that I absolutely adored, and they were much more my jam. So, like, going into Super Mario Odyssey, I kind of knew, you know... It wasn't going to be your shit. Okay, It I might not you. be, it may be, it might not be, but it, it just didn't win okay. me over. Like, Zelda, that won me over because it was completely a rewrite for the Zelda series. Super Mario just felt like more Super Mario. Yeah, I just want to come in here and start slapping dicks. I'm going to say, fuck Mario Odyssey, right? So I've got the game. Um, I played it for maybe two hours, maybe two and a half hours, um, which a lot of people will say, I didn't play enough of the game. I didn't get through enough for the worlds. I didn't want to, right? So I'm not a Mario kid. Never was. I had Sega um, way back when, so I was a Sonic guy, and then went to PC and, and never looked back. So Mario is not something that I've ever played. However, I had a Wii U, and I really enjoyed 3D World, which a lot of people will say was ass or was too scripted. What I liked with 3D oh, I World that. was 
I could boot up a level. I could get up to three people in it and every level was different. Like, it's just like, oh, shit, I'm riding a dinosaur down a river. Oh, shit, I'm like, I'm jumping on some lily pads. And it was like five minutes of fun and different. And every level was different and unique. Every level in this game is the same way. Uh Uh-uh. It Let me just say, man. a world that you navigate through a world and it's very open world and open ended. It just to me, it felt like a compromise between the two. It wasn't Breath of the Wild and it wasn't a set course with platforming events. It was like, here's an open ended thing with a few scripted things there. T- to me, it just felt like a compromise between the two. It wasn't for me, wasn't for me, at all. for me, every locale in Mario World felt different. And, and it wasn't just because they looked different. You had to incorporate different play mechanics every place you went. There were certain enemies in certain locations, and you had to figure out what you could do with this particular type of enemy to do what you needed to do in this world. Every world felt felt different. Now, I'll say, yeah, there's no story, but think of a Mario game that had a story. It's not like we're watching Metal Gear, and Pete says, Mario! It doesn't happen. Mario right? RPG? Yeah, I mean, well, Mario RPG is a different... It's an RPG. I'm Pink talking Mario. about... Yeah, I'm talking... <laughs> I'm talking. I'm, I'm being an asshole. <laughs> I'm talking open world type Mario 64 so style toxic. games. It, right, it just, right. it just no, for sure. He's always been a silent protagonist. Yeah, I mean, and in this game is the same way. And to me, where it lacked in story, it the fun made up for it. You know, going through this world, fighting these enemies, seeing the, the ridiculousness of these bosses, and and to me, these bosses, those those some of them were pretty easy. It had something that I haven't felt in a long time, probably since I was a kid. This game made me feel magical again. I felt like this this feeling of whimsy playing this game and going against these bosses and seeing just how ridiculous it was. It made me feel, honestly, like a kid again. And so uh, I, I love... preferred ukulele. I'd have much more fun playing that. Well, I mean, I... you'd be you'd be in the minority. Briar would be in the minority here. No, I, the mon- I completely agree. I mean, yeah. you look at any review site, and this game is getting 9.5, 10... The, the the reason I made it a topic was to say, it's weird. Um, it's Why don't yeah. I like this game? And then, BC, you, you added the topic. I love this game. So it became a debate. But originally, the topic was there to be like, hey. You felt weird that you didn't it's, like it. Uh, like, it's, it's, you know, it's like everybody's going and loving fucking McDonald's cheeseburgers. I eat one. I'm like, this sucks. Like, yeah, I, this isn't my thing at all. So, you know, like, it, it when I originally made the topic, it never was supposed to be a debate. But, you know. It's weird because this week I've been playing that game and I've been playing uh, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. And it's like, you talk about contrast. <laughs> like two different it's a big contrast. Games, man. Like, they couldn't be more different. But I am so much more into Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein's getting what? I mean, I, it's getting good scores, but not Mario scores, right? When you look at no. review sites. Uh, I need to pick that up, man. What does that look like, Briar, on your, on your pro? Is it, are you playing on PC? Playing on PC, I, I've heard it's fine on uh, PlayStation and Xbox, uh, but it, it it looks good. It's it's less about the graphics to me than it is about the story. The story is just batshit insane, and uh, it's it's just it's just fun. It's just fun to yeah. be in that world. That's so just like kind of a like an outsider's opinion here. Like we haven't gotten the Switch yet. We're definitely planning on it, and that is going to be one of the first games that we pick up. But from what I've seen, like I watched. Um, Hovey stream it pretty much from start to finish and um coming off uh super mario 3d world i mean like that was such a fantastic game this is so much better oh my god it 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 was really awesome so i kind of feel like that did kind of set the bar high for the next mario game um however everything that i've seen like you said like i mean i have a weird stance when it comes to mario you're talking to a guy whose favorite mario is probably one of the most hated ones and that's mario brothers 2 I love Mario too. You know, it was a super Sports? trippy one. You Come know, on. like yeah. not, it, you know, it wasn't even Mario two. It was like Doki Doki Panic mm-hmm. or something like yeah. that over in Japan or something stupid. Um, but it, from what I've saw, like it definitely wanted me to play it more because I don't play enough sit back and chill games. Like even like games like The Witcher, you know, that is totally a couch game. Like I get so drawn into the story and like so invested in these characters and. For me, it definitely looks like a game that me and the lady are going to jump into. It's very chill, very relaxed. You can play uh, two player too. We haven't done that yet, but you can play. Yeah, two see, that's in what this game. that's what we like to do is play them all like two player and steal the power ups from each other and you know troll and each another, other. And... Another great thing about this game that just made it so much better for me is you know how you can change Mario's appearance. You can make Mario look certain ways, and in certain levels you I actually did, like, have to dress up. 
Like I like yeah, dressing as a cowboy can... and putting on the uh, was it the sombrero. Like I thought that was funny. And, and some of those things actually help you in stages, like to access certain levels if you want to, you know, try to find every moon. But the one of the most awesome uh, dress ups that you can do is you can actually put on the outfit for Mario sixty four. You can dress up as Mario from the original Mario sixty four game, and you can go through the entire game again just like that. You know, it's and funny it, too. The last the last game that I really played a ton of, I, I played a bunch of the new Super Mario's, and I, I like those quite a bit just because they're so easy to play. Uh, you know, sitting down. But the last time I really like was blown away by our Mario was Super Mario Galaxy because it felt like they completely changed the formula, the formula of yeah. 3D Mario. You know. And then to go back to like kind of the Mario 64, it almost felt like a step back to me. It was less engaging to me. I feel like well, it's got yeah. more end game in this one though. Like I, the old I ones. I haven't played the end game. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like I feel like in like 3D world or whatever, you were after like, you know, the stereotypical like big gold coins, if I remember correctly, or um kind of like how on the Super Nintendo one you're going after all the Yoshi coins. It feels like in this one it's got uh, cons- I use the term end game loosely because it's really all a collecting it really, game. It and really does, though. Uh, yeah, Wilson, you can like, unlock costumes. There's the moons. Help me out here, Beasley. Like, what? Uh, there's, there's. Well, like for me, the the thing that changes it, you know, the dynamic of Super Mario Odyssey for other Mario games of the same type is that the story actually matters and you see it play out. Uh, Cooper or Bowser has kidnapped Peach, of course, and. It's not just, you know, I got to go save Peach. Bowser's going around the planet to different uh, lands and villages, and he's taking the best resources from these these indigenous people to create the best wedding of all time. So he's going to, like, the water land. He's getting, like, all their spring water so he can have, like, the best water. He's going to, like, this food village. I got the best water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's going to, like, this food village. And he's Does he go this... to Microsoft and get the best pixels? No, he, get, he goes no. to... Uh, he goes to uh, in, NVIDIA, him. NVIDIA. But um, you actually play through this and, and you see it happening and kind of unfolding. And, and it all makes sense in the end when you see what he's done with this wedding and all the stuff that you tried to fight to keep. You see it behind him as, you know, the last final battle goes down. You see this huge cake that he went and had made in this particular place and all this food that he had stolen from this place and all this water and all this junk. And you play through it and it's just so much fun. It just hasn't been a game like this in years. Uh, Kate texted me last week. And she just texted me, 10 out of 10, you have to beat this game. And I was like, really? And uh, this is like the best game I've ever played. You need to come play this game. And so she's really been on me. And I got to agree, man, the game is a 10 out of 10. has one of the sickest Mario soundtracks, going to New Donk City and seeing actual, you know, interacting with human beings and taking control over of, of them. It kind of set Mario aside because in the past, we always thought Mario was like a humanoid in his world. But this set him aside from actual human beings. So because I, I want to City- push this conversation forward to the next topic a little bit because it leads go ahead, in go ahead. well. Right. Is that Beasley, you've mentioned game of the year multiple times during this conversation. And yeah, we do want to do a revolver live game of the year. Right. Like we'd like to have some revolver decides revolver decides game of the year. That could be a fucking come to blows. I feel like, oh, you know, (laughs) Gary looks so excited to to see that face. (laughs) I had to drive to Connecticut. I just got to listen to another 10 minutes of Mario and ukulele. That's what I'm going to push for. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I'd like to I'd like to like start picking topics for game of the year, and I don't I don't know if we want to do it all in one show or if we want to kind of make it like uh, like the last segment of a couple of shows or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'd like to start thinking about it. I'd like to start getting your ideas, and I'd like to start getting viewer ideas. Like how would they like to see us uh, approach this? Um, because it's coming to that time of year, right? It's like the big mm-hmm. releases are out. It's time for us to kind of. I don't know. Like it's just fun to kind of like have these conversations. I think. Um, so I wanted to kind of get your input and see what you guys thought about that. Well, I mean, for us to decide, it had to be a game that we all played uh, and something that you know we we can actually speak on because there's a lot of game of the year contenders that some of us haven't played. Well, that's the major issue. So I don't think so. To- see, I disagree. Like, if you didn't play Wolfenstein and I wanted to get it, you know, like say we decide we want to do a top ten list for game of the year, and. I want Wolfenstein, and Gary wants Wolfenstein, and 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 uh, Wilson wants Wolfenstein, and you didn't play it. That doesn't disqualify it from being on the list. What what if what in a situation like this, like uh, maybe Little Nightmares, a game that I played and loved? I don't know if you guys played. I think Gary may have. I did. I did. Uh, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I uh, mean, then whatever your you passion has got you 
pull it through, man. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Fuck it. Let's do it live. I, I'm, to me, I'm excited about this. I've played some games this year that have kind of blown my mind. Resident Evil 7, you know, of course, um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Near Automata. Uh, it's an incredible game. It, it's just been a great year, man. And of course, now with Mario, I would argue it's been the one of the best years ever for video games. I mean, you look ever. at it, starting oh, right from January and going through December. I mean, it's been nonstop amazing games. I think we had a couple of slow months in the middle of summer, but that was nobody was complaining because it was just giving everybody a chance to catch up. Sonic Mania. Oh, See, man. I always struggle. Hellblade. With Hellblade. Game that of the was year. What I was gonna say. Hellblade. Um, because I play so many old games and games that were like two and three years old this year, um, or like in a given year, I struggle to to pick what's top there. I think like I think what you said about bringing maybe your top five um next week if if maybe the viewers give us some help as well in the comments that'd be really good but if we each bring our top five um to a to a topic and we do maybe an extended topic and then like, maybe leave with uh top game of the year out of each of our top fives like we've got yeah. uh, we've got a final from that i think that'd be strong let me let me ask you guys a question and it doesn't necessarily correlate with this but it's weird that something this big has come out and we haven't talked about it on this show, especially having someone who used to be so deeply steeped in the lore and, and this particular franchise. Have any of you guys been playing the new Call of Duty World War II? No, and I own it. Uh, I haven't even booted it up. No, I've I mean, watched I mean, some of it. I've a lot of good things interest. about this game. Mm -hmm. No, I'm hearing mm -hmm. nothing good. Who's telling really? good things? Americans. Well, yeah, Everyone I've talked to said that they've been loving the hell out of it, man. Americans, the campaign. Gary. Is is literally formulaic. And Nobody cares about the campaign, Gary. Yeah, right. <laughs> the zombies That's not like campaign. Play Call of Duty, Gary. Call of Duty has a campaign. Yeah, the, the zombies exactly. mode I've heard is is more of the same. Um, it's not particularly. It's not got the same exciting, unique sort of uh, character that you had on on the most recent game, Infinite Warfare. You know, the whole zombies in space land, and then taking it through eighties and nineties as as they did. Um, that's what I'm hearing. The multiplayer, I've also heard the maps are tiny because they've taken away a lot of the speed of movement. So to, to compensate for that, they've made the map smaller uh, and the spawns are still just as chaotic. Uh, the best mode, from from what I've heard, again, from three or four reviewers and from watching some Twitch, is just a rip-off of Battlefield. Um, you know, the whole... Battlefield has the huge levels, though. No, the, the the idea of progressing an objective through you know multiple scenarios. So like you you push forward onto A and then A moves onto B. It's like a war fronts, I think they call it, or whatever um, topic they've got for it. I've heard nothing overwhelmingly positive. I've heard that it's sort of seven out of ten middle of the road game. Mm, I mean, it hurts well. to exactly be what you'd expect from a Call of Duty World War Two game. I mean, like I feel like they've taken a step back from the futuristic warfare and now you've got fucking space lasers and you know uh, you know attack dogs with guns and shit like just stupid stuff like leaping around all the place like you know there's games for that there's other universes to play that fantasy out a lot of people when they want to call it duty they just want a good shooter with some interesting elements thrown in which are usually kill streaks and a lot of them are the same kill streaks or whatever but from what i've heard like <clears throat> my uh good friend of mine con man i've been hanging out with him in psn chat while he's been playing and i've kind of gotten his he's got a very objective mind when it comes to games and he said the same thing gary maps are smaller um that's a huge bummer um the he has run into a few connection problems with people that won't take damage so hey it's not just destiny where lag can help you out apparently so he's had a few people that didn't take damage but he said he loves the old guns he even though the maps are small he said that he's still enjoying them but the thing that i found the most interesting is that you can't just pick any perk that you want anymore they're actually kind of combined into a um a class almost kind of like a subclass you know what i mean so it's kind of like how destiny did it where they picked some perks that are the easiest to balance and let you roll with it and from what i've heard there's already been like a balance update like a balance patch for some of the weapons and stuff already so i mean like they go quick over there yeah they always have yeah yeah they've got the the manpower that's for sure to put on it and pump out updates and stuff but um Every year, man, I say I'm not getting the new Call of Duty. I'm not getting the new Call of Duty, and I always do. 
And this is the first year that I haven't done it. And this is also the first year that I've had a lot of my friends tell me that uh, they're really enjoying it, that it feels a lot different, that it's it's kind of like uh, it goes back to the Mario argument. When you buy a Mario, you kind of know what to expect. You mm -hmm. know, there's a reason why they pump those out because it's a formula that works. And Call of Duty, you know, it, it definitely works. Like, you know, I don't always enjoy it every year, but it. This one, man, like I've always been a sucker for the World War II ones. And how long has it yeah. been since Save Touch, since Call of Duty's done? Was it World at War? COD 4, isn't it? Yeah, World at War. World at War. That was a long time ago. You know, that was like pretty close to the beginning of like the PS3. What was the last Call of Duty numbered game? What was the last one that was actually numbered? I think it was COD 4. Jeez, imagine how big COD 5 would be. <laughs> <laughs> one more bigger than 4. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Like, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare had Modern Warfare two and Modern Warfare three. So COD yes. four, COD four was the first Modern Warfare, and then they dropped the numbers after COD and started putting them after the Modern yep. Warfare. Mm. Yeah, I don't it's know. Okay. I I enjoyed the beta, but I and I bought the game, but I just haven't had a chance to play it yet. That's not that's not really speaking to Call of Duty. It's just your, um, your gaming priorities have so changed. So much to play right now, and I'm dying. Like I'm absolutely enjoying the hell out of uh, uh, Wolfenstein 2. I'm still playing Destiny. I'm trying to grind Destiny to get my uh, Titan up to, uh, you know, max level. And I'm dying to play Assassin's Creed because that game looks amazing to me. Uh, and I actually, I got a copy of that for free coming pretty soon here. So I'm really looking forward to playing that. Yeah, man, that looks like a game you want to talk about, a familiar franchise that has, like, revamped Yeah, what the game is about um not really what it's about but a lot of the mechanics and things that you'll experience in the game a lot more rpg elements i saw that there was um rarity tiered weapons so there was like your green yeah. blue golds and purples you know those sort of things that definitely looks really interesting and, and i definitely want to jump into that significantly improved as well on what it was it used to be very similar to the arkham games and now <sighs> it looks closer to souls will look souls like with the parries, the dodge, the roll out the way. It's a lot of free-form targeting. I mean, to me, talking about COD versus Assassin's Creed, I feel like AC has has evolved the franchise while still giving familiars what they expect from an Assassin's Creed game, whereas I feel like COD has reskinned the game and not really innovated very much. Uh, mm. well, if, That's if, what if everybody was asking with COD, though. That's what the user base was asking for. Yeah, to go back. They wanted, they wanted boots on the ground. They wanted, you know, they were asking for another World War II game. They were sick of flying around. They were super the, sick of these, you know, jetpacks and laser weapons. They just well, wanted, like, a return to what they used to love in Call of Duty, and that's what they got this year. And, and you asked for it too, bro. You, yeah, I think depending on if you are a COD fan or not, you may or may not be really happy about this. If I don't think it's going to bring you into the franchise if you're not a fan. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to pick it up. I just recently bought Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wilds. I haven't loaded that up yet. I, I downloaded it, but I haven't given it a try. I know you guys played that game. Are any of you thinking about maybe getting the DLC? 100%. Yeah, yeah. that game was it's awesome. It'll be in the new year if I get to it. Yeah, same. <laughs> it'll, it'll, be so stressed out. it'll be after like, Christmas. It'll be after Christmas for sure. Early December, we got uh, the first DLC for Destiny. Oh, yeah. Well, Horizon's going to be fucked then. And then at the end of December, what else do we have, Briar? Christmas? Noobs? Christmas noobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's yeah. Christmas time in Destiny. <laughs> I mean, I'm really looking it's forward to playing Horizon on the non-existent PS4 that I have now. The, the paperweight's gone. I've, I've fully ascended. There's paper I've flying left everywhere in Gary's house. I can't believe paper you sold it, man. Everywhere. I can't believe it. I've sold the PS4 for people on the podcast who don't know. I no longer have a PlayStation 4. I am I am out of the... Well, no, actually, I'm not out of the Sony ecosystem because i still, still got the Vitas. Well, Vitas. Yeah. I still enjoy them, and I still love the Switch. But, but for me... Do you still have another PS4 somewhere? I do have one, but that's the fiancé, so it's not mine. It's yeah, yeah I got to tell you, man, you picked the wrong time to sell it. They just pushed an update that just pushed every game to 120 frames per second. Yeah. It's insane. you got to play it on, like... <laughs> What like 360p to get that resolution? Worth Fantastic! It. <laughs> Worth it. Worth. You gotta hook it up to a flux capacitor to get like that nine. required power. But being completely honest, it's any console that's trying to do what PC does. Um, I'm obviously going to play it on the PC. It's my natural, yeah. um, comfortable place to play. The Switch is so unique that I'd never get rid of it. It's it's a fantastic 
piece of kit and in fact so fantastic that it got me to play a first person shooter on it for the first time which is our next topic um which is titled let's get down on our knees and blow doom on the switch for around five minutes which is what i'd (laughs) like to do right now so chapsticks out gentlemen because this is going to be a uh, a wild ride so i said that i wouldn't play um i wouldn't play doom on the switch (laughs) I said that He's physically be, chap sticking up right now. <laughs> I, I genuinely said that it was going to be ass at 30 frames per second. Um, the resolution, it maxes at 720p, uh, plays for most of the time at 600p. It's on Joy-Cons a lot of the time, which is super inaccurate. And I've got to tell you, none of that matters. Somebody please clip be- that for me. <laughs> <laughs> none of that matters because the game is Doom. It is doom in every way. And I, I kind of think that, that there's actually a, a, a small kind of quote that I won't go into there, but I was watching um, Julian Egerbrecht on Nintendo Voice Chat, who um, he was the guy from Factor 5, one of the lead devs from Factor 5, who used to do a lot of porting. They did the Rogue Squadron series, like Rogue Squadron, Rogue Leader, etc. Uh, and he ported like Contra 3 to the Game Boy. And he said, when you're taking full fat games and stripping them down to put onto other platforms, what you do is you don't look at what graphically you can take. You look at where the fun is, what's the essence of the game, why do people play that game, what's the feeling it captures, and then you build from the ground up to evoke that feeling. And for me, <laughs> Doom has got hyper-aggression, violence, the feeling of power, the feeling of being unstoppable, momentum, speed, and being 30 frames per second or 600p does, feel, does not fast? stop that. It's amazing. Have you guys watched any of it? Played? Yeah, or I seen watched uh, the Digital Foundry review of it. <clears throat> yeah, I think it, it was uh, Game Informer that I watched uh, review it. And I mean, I was actually kind of surprised to see that it was running at 30, um, 30 frames per second, but it was a really good 30. Like, I know that sounds silly. I know 30 is 30, but like, I've seen some bad 30 frame per second games, and some. this one looks really good, but you can kind of see how they accomplished that. Like, when you get closer to certain oh, objects things. you can see that the texture is down a lot like uh forklifts was i mean man it looked like <clears throat> it wasn't quite as like polygon as like playstation one but like the texture of it man it was like looking ps1 there in a few spots but with it being such a fast-paced game you're not really stopping to smell the roses so to speak in my, doom you know you're my- constantly moving you're you're uh, getting enemies weak and doing, you know, some bloody gory finisher on them, you know, and it does look fantastic. It looks like a really good version Doom. of Doom. Does it now, Gary? You played the Doom originally on PC, correct? Yeah. Uh, playing it on the Switch, y- you know, it's the same game. Does it feel like the same game? Does it have the same degree of intensity? Does it? I mean, at 30 frames, you would think that that would make it feel different. Does so, it still feel the same? On the PC, I never dropped a frame below like 200. The game is so optimized, like it's perfect. The um, game is insane, insanely well optimized on every platform. It it does that dynamic resolution switch. Yeah, it works well on that, everything. Yeah. Like it never drops a frame, no matter what you're playing it on. I heard the Switch is like the first time it actually they've seen it do it. Yeah, so I, I played it at that. I played it with a 144 hertz monitor overclocked, so it was like. It, you know, as many frames, aside from like Briar's Godly <laughs> 240, it was about as as many frames as you're possibly going to see on it. And keyboard and mouse where you've got precision aim, precision movement. What they've done with this game, with heavy use of motion blur, the speed of your character, the 30 frames felt like I was playing at like 120, 140. I can't explain it. Are you it. kidding me? The aim assist on it makes you much, much more accurate than you ever could be with a keyboard and mouse unless you were like counter-strike mlg level player i felt like i could run into a room filled with demons and dance around it like i could in the pc using joy cons docked on the switch um and the pace of play and the use of motion blur as i said i could not it felt to me like it was playing at a 60 or 100 frames um, what game it, I was again, shocked I, when I saw the footage i was like dude is this running yeah, at 60 and right yeah, me and I sam were it. actually watching the review and the first thing the guy says is, okay, I'll point out the obvious here. It is running at 30. And I'm like, that is not an obvious 30. That game was moving really fast. Like, and, and you, I got a question. Did you ever pl- plug it in and play it on your TV? TV. That's what I'm not I did. Uh, I, not on the TV because I don't game on a TV. But on a 1080p monitor, yes. 
Um, so 27 inch or 28 inch 1080p monitor look good. Um, if I was going to play games on a monitor, I probably wouldn't choose to use the switch or well, switch doom. Um, I used the pro controller to see what that felt like. That also felt good. It was playable, serviceable. It wasn't where it shone to me. It shone in the handheld mode gotcha. because you've got the same aggressive rock music. You know, they've not lost any of the sampling. They've still got all of that there. They've captured it all. Okay. Um, you know, you, you've got all of the multiplayer features. You can play multiplayer versus bots if you're offline. So you could go on and you know, put bots on super hard and get a feeling of being in a multiplayer game. You've got the arcade mode, which has got online leaderboards. So that will be a set series of different um, challenges to complete. And then you can actually have your score uploaded and compete against other people globally. In global does it have leaderboards. snap maps? It doesn't. So that's the one feature it does uh, not have. You can't create your own maps in it. But okay. I mean, <laughs> I never used that here. Oh, it's so good, though. It, it's awesome, it. man. There's a... Um... I actually found one that was like destiny related and you'd load into an area and it would say, pick your class hunter Titan or warlock. And it would be your loadout of weapons that it would give you and like certain abilities and stuff. And it was actually really genius. Like really? I, I really like some of the snap map really? stuff. Yeah. There's some really fun stuff in it's, there. It, honestly, I coming from a, and I thought it was just interesting me personally saying it. Cause if you have any experience of, listening to me for a period of time some might call me an elitist you know i don't know where they get that, some. That, that point from but you know i i have a, a relative Bayless, standard of first baseless accusations <laughs> Ars, assholes all of them um i've got a standard of, of expectation that i have for first person shooters um and this you know to me passes my acid test of am i you know, am I taken back playing it? Is it something that I'd want to play? Is it something that I feel is responsive? This felt better than Destiny 2 on console. I'd rather be playing this me? than Destiny 2. Yes, 100%. This felt closer to Destiny 2 on PC. And and it's a and it's a Switch game for me. I think but it's um not on the TV, yeah. just on the handheld. Just on the handheld. On the TV it was serviceable. It still So you still could play it on TV and, and you weren't bothered too much by it? Monitor I, I, if I put it up to a 55 or 60 inch TV, maybe, maybe, then, okay. maybe. Um, but I'm not. I'm playing it on a, a monitor. For me, it's an academic, um, it's more of an experiment to see what can you port to the Switch. And I think it's testing um, the realms of what we consider possible. You know, you see the Switch and you say that could never play AAA games, could never play Assassin's Creed, it could never play COD. But, you know, they put in Wolfenstein 2 on it. And they put Doom on it, and if they make if they get that essence of what they did with Doom in, in Wolfenstein Two, I think again you'll have a fantastic place to play Wolf Two. That was my my next question for you. After experiencing Doom on the Switch, do you think that they can make a respectable uh, version of Wolfenstein Two? Yes, because Wolfen, yeah, it's the Vulcan yeah, but, engine. But this engine has been like revamped and really upgraded for Wolfenstein Two. They've done things graphically that just didn't exist at the time of the original game in Wolfenstein Two. Looks and plays better than Wolfenstein by a pretty good margin. Really, I, I think so. For me, Foundry. Um, Wolf Two, uh, and I, I said that to you, Brian, when I first played it, didn't I? I? Said that it doesn't look as as polished as the first Wolf, or as polished as Doom in terms of graphically. Um, that some of the set pieces and particle effects that it can do are better, but that you know it's to be expected. For me, Wolf Two is less about the gameplay and less about the presentation as it is the cutscenes and the voice acting and the story that, you know, Completely these voice right. actors is sold that game so effectively. Like I was, I've never been as jacked up. Like I was ready to go out and shoot some Nazis, like genuinely in my life, like pick up a revolver and go out and, and yeah, kill some music. Like after a cutscene, like people will get you amped up and they'll just start this music, like this driving yeah. rock. And you're just like, yeah, let's <laughs> fucking go. Yeah. Awesome. You know, the way, BJ so just like, how do you feel? Way, man, you know, they'll the ask him, <laughs> ask him how you feel, and he's like, like a fucking freight train. Like he's like, yeah, man, like I feel like that too. Like, oh, really, I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah, it's oh, like so good. good. That's exciting. You know, I'm not going to go into the gameplay the is a little lackluster, but you definitely want to jump into it. You're ready to jump into it every time. Like so, the, yeah. I got a question a big for you, Gary. Um, sorry, hang on. Shit, I've never. I, I have Wolfenstein on PS4. I, I haven't played the original. Oh. Should I get Should I get Wolfenstein Two on my Switch? Play the first it, one first. Would it be a better value? I yeah. I, we talked about this. Yeah, definitely. definitely play the first. Don't, yeah, don't jump yeah. into two without playing one. 
I, Ooh, pick I would up, get it. Pick I would get it. Yeah, I would. Like, it sounds like Doom is amazing. Like, let's get Doom on the Switch so that when we go on a car ride or a plane ride, we got something. Yeah. Doom is Doom is a very easy game to pick up and play for a few minutes and put down. Yeah, Wolfenstein, man, you want to put some hours into that straight because you want to be just invested in that story. You're not going to want to be talking to your kids or or worrying about like you know like is this guy going to spill a drink on me in the next seat over or yeah you know. And, you and want to be invested in it. You want to be engaged. Okay. And I found so Wolfenstein as well made me visibly angry at times. Like some of the shit you're watching on that cutscene, you're like, that motherfucker. You actually yeah, feel like. Playing PlayStation 4 on the, on the cutscenes? Did well, they have like want... PS4s in the game? Were they playing consoles in the cutscenes? No. You said you no, visibly but... angry. <laughs> that, that, if it was Yobos, I just would have rioted. But no, it's, it's, I've Is never. I mean, I'm, I'm plugging <laughs> plug a separate YouTuber, but Skill Up's review was perfect on this, where he didn't review it as a game. He reviewed it as a movie. He said that this is the best Tarantino movie he's ever seen, um, and it's the best movie of the year, which what? I completely agree with. It's got three and a half hours of cutscenes if you time them end to end. So the game is three and a half hours long of cutscenes, and they're perfect. They are so, so good. good. How long yeah, is this game? Not long. It's maybe um, 10, 11 hour campaign, 12 if you're slow. It is so it's like amazing. seven and a half hours of gameplay and three and a half hours of cutscenes. Which is perfect. That's exactly the right balance. And then there's post game on it as well. It's, it's, I'd advise everyone. There's no loot crates in it. There's no microtransactions. There's a reasonably priced DLC, which is going to add about another 12 hours of campaign gameplay across three characters. It, it's, yeah. If, if I can implore any listeners here to support Wolfenstein 2, you're supporting one of the last bastions of traditional AAA gameplay that isn't loot crate infested bollocks. If you like the first one, the second one is way better. Like it's, it yeah. just amps it up to another level. Like the first one was great, um, but this this one is... <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. The, really? the first one was really good. Like it, it it's always been a really good game. Like, well, since they've started putting story into them, it's always been a really good balance of high octane gun battle explosions death and then story and then right back to it and it seems like with the new wolfenstein that they have found the secret herbs and spices that secret make sauce. that game so explosive and just dumped more in they found like yeah. what really worked with the previous one and they've ramped that up and it is it's extremely the story is extremely engaging and that's really cool that uh who was that again who reviewed it like a movie gary uh skill up he's skill got up. a partially partial idea. youtuber but uh great guy he does um very in-depth lengthy reviews he's not a daily uploader but definitely one to check out if you like you know, the 30 minute plus reviews on games that are really considered that's awesome man that's good stuff yeah you, it's, uh, uh, Great, great game. I just wanted to evangelize about it because I know we didn't have Wolf 2 in the topics, which made me sad. But I, I yeah, got it's... sad because I was the only one blowing Doom. Well, I, I'd blow Doom as well. I just I, I wanted to say, actually, hashtag Beastly was right for the first time here. Um, <laughs> first time in his life, questionably. But um, we've got, yeah, Beastly was right. He told me beforehand, I said, it's going to be 30 frames. It'll be ass. I choose not to play Doom at 30 frames. It would diminish the I'm experience. you bought it. Yeah, I, 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 I bought a lot of games on the Switch. I think I'm up to like 21 games on the Switch. I support the <laughs> console because yeah. I really I like what they're doing with it. I like the fact that Nintendo are being innovators and they're not just you know chasing that hardware pony. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I wanted to see how doing what worst case scenario I trade it in and I lose fifteen twenty dollars in the trading in the wash to to effectively rent the game. But no, I'm keeping this. This is a, a great game. Uh, wow. I'll, I'll buy this the next trip I have. Next trip I have, I'm bringing this with me because I, I, I told I Kate, can't think of a better game to play on the go than Doom. Yeah, this on the go, man. Great. Doom last year was like in contention for game of the year, Briar. It was First amazing. Person, shoot, it's an amazing it was a, game. It's sick to have that on the go. Come on. I told Kate. I got home. I said, Gary bought Doom on uh Switch. He said, Why? So that's how <laughs> Kate knows that Gary don't <laughs> fuck around with like those kind of 30 <laughs> frames per second you're... games. She's like, Why? She even turned her nose it, up the thought of it. Oh, yeah, just a uh, word of warning, unless you are digital for a specific reason, I'd recommend going physical cartridge on that and L.A. Noir and a couple of others. The it's I think I had to install seven and a half gigabytes it's... 
of additional data that's on top of the cartridge if you go fully digital i believe it's about 45 gig which is a lot on switch when you're looking at 200 gig cards i've started uh, memory cards. buying only uh, physical copy physical it's all switch. i do in switch like, yeah I'd, so. I'd like to just get the digital because it's so much more convenient but i don't want to be buying memory cards left and right yeah same for me it's it's convenient to have that i've got like a case that's got multiple places to put the cartridges so i leave the cases at home and it's like having digital because i've got like all a ton of yeah. cartridges with me and they're not cumbersome to carry so is it's that as like good the, as um a little like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas kit that you had full of Joy Cons, you know, like it was like the. <laughs> yeah, again, that's something else that I should probably raise on the uh, on the on the thing. I've got a problem not only in buying Switch games, but I also have a problem in buying Switch Joy Cons. Joy Cons, just feel have... like every fucking uh, only color. fucking Gary can fucking fall into this dark hole. <laughs> <laughs> it was you seriously. Point, you got a great fucking point. <laughs> it was seriously uh, like that scene from fucking Fear and Loathing where they're in that anti-drug convention and it shows an x-ray image of his briefcase full of drugs like that's gary's <laughs> but it was full of every color do you have every color uh at the moment the only ones i'm missing are the two mario red um and that's because they only come as part of a bundle with a switch i could import them from japan where they're selling them separately but the import charges would be a bitch it'd be about 135 dollars just to get the two joy cons i'm holding for gary will have those by the end i do too bro 100 <laughs> Probably. He'll Probably find a way. He'll find a way. It's, it's Life like a finds little, um, a way. <laughs> it's like a little case of coloured dildos. It's like Jurassic Park on your know, ass. They, <laughs> they've nailed me with it. I wouldn't buy a different coloured PS4 controllers or Xbox controllers. There's no desire there. But because you put them onto your Switch and it becomes a unique console, and it's almost like a special edition console, they've got me with all of them. Because I bought like the pink and, and green. And then I was like, ah, oh, but if I get blue and and red and two yellows then i can start mixing and matching and i can have like pink and yellow i don't have to stay with pink and green or i can have like gray and pink or yeah the possibilities are endless it's what if you it's got a two whole... gray ones and you just don't give a shit yeah that's how the fuck i feel I don't give a shit. <laughs> then you have a sad boring life man get some color in it get some get some color in hey, i don't know if you notice gary you make a strong I, point I, gary I'm a, I'm a colored person there's nothing but excitement here okay? <laughs> i find that offensive <laughs> I was strippers over there <laughs> I was yeah. going to make that joke, but I, didn't. I, I figured BC was going to do it. <laughs> peanut, butter, peanut brittle and strippers, Gary, at a young age. <laughs> I've just been very exciting. Okay, God well, damn it. I'm going to BRB, but uh, you, you guys continue while I'm gone. Don't worry. I won't miss okay. anything. What's the next we'll topic, the... BC? Well, well, you guys have been talking about Doom on uh, the Switch. Um, you know, I figured uh, we'd talk about some video game movies. You know, you guys <laughs> remember Doom? Yeah. You know, the old video game movies. Rock. So, like, Classic, video rock. video game movies have been notoriously bad what? throughout the year. I think we can hold out. <laughs> Just hear me out. Have been notoriously bad throughout the years. Like, whether it's bad writing or some sort of a disconnect between the director and the game itself. <laughs> Why do you think that is? And Briar, you've already looked like you've got a million so things to say. So fucking toxic, Wilson. You're so toxic. You're, you're so me? horrible. Mortal Kombat is a classic. Mortal Kombat. Okay, now Super hear me out. Street Fighter is amazing. Tomb yeah. Raider, both one and two. Beautiful movies. Beautiful movies. Hey, hey look. Raw Julia <laughs> was the best bison. He He's was the than... best part of that movie. That's it. That was Have the you only watched good Super thing Mario about Brothers? Street Fighter, Have you seen that movie? I... I will agree with you. I will agree with you that Mortal Kombat was the best video game movie of movie all time. time. I went time. to that. It, 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 if we're talking, if we gotta, we have to, we have we need a uh, criteria here. Uh -huh. And when I say the best video game movie, I don't mean that it had the greatest actors. I don't mean that it had the greatest special effects. Yeah. How true was it to the game? And yeah, I feel that Mortal alive Kombat was that. as true as a game could be. Or a movie Dude, you want to talk be... about good ones? Remember Double Dragon? How big of a oh, flop that yeah. was? That was awful. This Double was Dragon, awful. so close Listen. to my heart. Billy, always remember. They didn't even get their names right. Like in the NES version, they look at Gary's Joy Cons for all, oh, of, our, awesome, for all of our that's... audio listeners here. Gary has brought the case Eight. of paraphernalia oh. that is, it is uh, Joy Cons like of different colors. Offering Twelve you. of them. Right? <laughs> Let me get two. It's just like a box of colored dildos. I, yeah. I take great pleasure in stroking them. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm back for the just, uh, movie talk, but uh, I just wanted to yeah. share that. 
So Con Man in the chat brings up a perfect point because he's uh, my Street Fighter homie and he knows yeah. what's up. If you know anything about the Street Fighter lore, the movie is an absolute They disgrace. took the Street Absolutely. Fighter story, a story that was written for a video Con game, not a movie, and they evolved it and they improved it and they built on a solid foundation. How the fucking and the masterpiece, Andy, okay? Starring Raul Julia and Jean-Claude goddamn Van Damme. <laughs> I'm gonna what whip that got. son of a bitch bison's ass so hard that the next that bison wanna be. I, I don't know if I think Van Damme can remember Van Damme. it. I think it was it, mid cocaine binge. I think it was just yes. like a, a three month blur for him. Which oddly enough, the Super Mario Brother movie, everybody was fucking drunk when they were making it, and that's one of the it's reasons true. that movie is so goddamn amazing. Does anybody it's remember true. what the Goombas looked like in Mario the movie? How they were the big ass dudes with a little tiny head on top. Yeah, those were those were fucking like Goombas. Creatures. Yoshi yeah. was an extra from Jurassic Park. Okay, I I know every single part of the fucking Street Fighter movie. I, I was a kid. I was a Street Fighter fan. I hated the movie, but I know every single. Cinematic every line of dialogue from that shitty movie. Hated Same thing movie. with Mortal Kombat. Yes, Mortal Kombat was good though. It no, stayed Mortal true Kombat, to the Kombat, game. Oh, and then it just kept yeah. getting better. Mortal Kombat two, Mortal no. Kombat three. No, no, <laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation came afterwards, and when they tried to pull in part two and part three and everything, and they just completely destroyed what was good. And they fucking killed Johnny Cage, and but they got a better Sonya and Mortal was Kombat. The French dude that played Raiden, the guy from Highlander. What was yeah, name? that was yeah. There um, can only be one. Christopher, um, <laughs> Christopher, Christopher Lambert. Christopher Lambert. Lambert. Yeah. Lambert. Christopher the, Walken. He was good. Raiden. He was a good writer. <laughs> game film of all time. Fatality. Yeah, this has to be beast. Uh, uh, beastly decides. Revolver decides. The, the worst video game film of all time is House of the Dead. Oh, how can you say that? I had that. I literally had that as a PSP video. It was on one of those little discs. Yeah. Oh my God! What a wonderful movie. It. I mean. Honestly, I forgot my headphones when right I now. went for the plane ride to watch it. So I didn't get any of the audio stuff, but there was definitely a lot of tits in it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a way of like That's smuggling of porn into your household <laughs> undetected? I don't know if you going to look at this. <laughs> UMD pornography smuggled into the criteria, Briar house. though. How much fucking? Early 2000s, <laughs> the video game company started to let a complete imbecile named Yui Bowl get the right to their, their video game franchises. And Blood Rain was one. Blood Rain. Uh, house another Dead classic. was another. Absolute I can tell you the worst. I have facts right here in front of me. Facts. Wikipedia never lies. All right. Mm. Let's trust in the Wikipedia, <laughs> like just the blind faith that it is here. All right. So I to understand some of your conspiracy the worst, theories now. <laughs> the, worst, the worst video game movie was Double Dragon. You want to know how much money that movie made? Seven dollars. Guess. Guess. A little higher. Uh, Seven dollars. Seven dollars. <laughs> One ticket. The You're just a smidgen off. It was the producer's mom who went to see it. <laughs> Two million. She didn't stay to the end. Forty-one thousand dollars that movie made. Two million. You want to know how much? Uh, what the next lowest one was? Um, yeah. Let me see here. There was one in the. Okay, Blood Rain. Mm. Three million six hundred fifty thousand. Bowl. Bowl made that shit. What a piece You want to know the highest grossing video game movie of all time? Resident, Resident Evil. Resident Warcraft. Evil? Four hundred and thirty-three oh, million. I didn't see Warcraft, Warcraft but I heard it's awful. amazing. I heard it's, it's so bad. It takes no. everything that's good about Warcraft, the game, throws it out the window like it should be, <laughs> and then starts from scratch, and we just can enjoy a nice movie. <laughs> Gary's, gonna fucking, Gary's gonna send you a Hitman package. Look, um, speaking of Hitman, that was a, a movie that didn't do well. But one video game movie that I have to say for me is up there with Mortal Kombat. I actually might like it a little bit more. Honestly, I do. Is the original Silent Hill film that was yeah. done yeah, very like very that. well. They paid a lot of respect to the original uh, game. They did change the gender because it was Silent Hill two that they turned into a film. But Pyramid Head was true to the video game lore. Uh, and of course, the little girl was true to the video game lore. It was just a great film. Loved it overall. And of course, it got worse as they made more Silent Hill movies. So for me, Silent Hill and Mortal Kombat probably the best Mortal, the best video game films. And now they're working on Tomb Raider. They're saying that's supposed to it's supposed to be pretty good. That's gonna be more like the new the reboot of Tomb Raider. The reboot. The it's, the, it's the reboot. It's, Which I, it's I basically... really enjoy those games. Actually, I'm I'm actually planning on buying Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's the second one. Is that right? Rise of the yeah. Tomb Raider is the yeah. second one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have that currently on uh, Xbox. 
Uh, but I plan on buying it again on PC because I want to play through it again because I liked it so much. It looks nice on PC. It does yeah. look I, nice. I just wish that they had the girl who played Laura in the game play Laura in the film because she's oh, a yeah. real. And and it would have been really awesome to you know to for her to get her acting chops up and actually play that character. They probably film. don't want to because then they'll have to pay her more to do the next game. <laughs> but she is she was perfect. She was so perfect. She, yeah, and, and the, unbelievable. There, they're working on the Uncharted film as well. So that's something else that's down the pipeline. Aren't the Uncharted oh. games already kind of like movies? Yeah, they're <laughs> like, better than redundant. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the I just heard on the news the day before yesterday on my, on my way to work, it was on the morning show, that um, uh, Konami's Metal Gear film is yeah. coming sometime soon. And oh, they're saying that fuck Konami, they're, man. they're fighting all the tropes that have made video game films bad in the past, they're trying to make it a good film. Well, you know who's so, directing that, right? The guy who, who did the Destiny 2 live-action trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the guy who did that. And I felt like... One? No, the... Uh, the For the Puppies! Uh, you know, that, that, was that was a good one. Like, I mean, the all the action... Yeah, all the action after that was really good. But, like... So, I had thrown this topic up, and I was kind of looking down at some of our old topics beforehand, and I saw that Beasley had kind of had something that we could kind of piggyback off this. And he, I, I believe this was you, Beasley. It said, if done right, which video game movie would you like to see become a motion picture film or franchise? Yeah. What would you guys, obvi- the choice is obvious for me, Destiny, 100%. If done correctly mm-hmm. and done right, and there was, it doesn't even have to be a movie. Uh, I feel like Halo kind of nailed it with Halo Legends. And I really wish they would have done more of those because those kind of backstories with, uh, Spartans that you had never heard of before, or in this case, Guardians that you you had never heard of before, or you know, familiar ones like Toland and I'll Osiris or Saint Fourteen. I like when they stay away from like the main characters more. Side yeah. story. That story is already being told, and in a way that to me is superior than what film can achieve. Yep. Because I am Grin. now taking part in this story, and. To- mm-hmm to take that same story and retell it in a movie, it's always going to be inferior because I'm no longer an active participant. <laughs> it's hey, to me, it's ludicrous that the Bioshock film never got made. Like, that yeah, that was yeah, in was... production, wasn't it? Yeah. That... And, and to, to wrap your point there, um, Brian, I, I agree that for me, Destiny, I'd, I'd hate to see a Destiny film. Um, for me, that's that's not something I'd like to see. I'd love to see a Destiny Netflix series. Um, that focuses on non guardians, like you know, or, like, oh, that'd be cool. That'd be no, cool. like Cawthorn and Devrim K and them, so those sorts of peripheral characters that not even those, but people that are part of the farm's resistance. Yeah, I would love a Devrim K thing, like that Devrim sort K of shit, and Sloan mm-hmm. and like all those other guys. Yeah, that'd be awesome. The people that aren't but light, stay enabled. away from the guardians. I think you're yeah, right. I just don't, I don't want to see like cheesy and overbombs going off left and right. I just think, unless you've got budget to do it, like Game of Thrones style money you're not going to do it well. I think do it like agents of shield where it's something that enriches the universe, but doesn't, you know, you don't need to have these big action set pieces. It can be, well, well it's not always like that with guardians. I mean, like, you know, there's tons of stories of guardians that were struggling or, you know, you look at, uh, Eris's fire team, you know what I mean? They weren't just down there whipping Nova bombs, having a grand time whooping ass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They got, they got Tell their the ass story kicked. of the thorn and Rose and, and, uh, last word like that, that could be an amazing series. Anything. I mean, you could tell the story, like, you know, for, I think they did it for, uh, what was it? Uh, Crimson Days. They kind of made a cheesy little, I shouldn't say cheesy because it's not, it's actually pretty cool. They made a story about uh, two guardians that happened to meet in a place because guardians are notorious treasure seekers. You know what I mean? And um, the warlock wanted the knowledge of the treasure. The hunter just wanted the glory of being there first. And while they were arguing, you know, a shitload of cabal came up on them and they ended up fighting for like, two days and three nights or something like that. And by the end of it, like they became best friends, you know, and that's how the crimson days, the crimson doubles started or whatever, you know, they could do little stories like that, you know, or like Briar said, they could touch on exotic weapons. Like they could touch on, you know, we haven't heard shit about Toland, what the hell he's been up to. You know, he could be like the, uh, what was the bad dude's name at the end of Gadget? I'll get you, Gadget. He could always be that guy, you know. Yeah. He could be like, like the, the villain the, at the, the end or something. The, you know, just like, like, well, I'd love to yeah. see ten episodes or eight episodes, whatever it is, that aren't linked together, or maybe have a very loose spider web narrative theme. Like that it's just animated a different... Halo thing they did. Be cool. Animated. Yeah, like the or the Animatrix, you know, the thing that was there. Just like a series, a series of different stories. So I, I tune in for an hour. 
and I get characters and I get a predicament and I get a resolution and then I get something else. And some of it could be in the last city, some of it in the farm, other areas, you know, like, like you say, little, little kind of vignette stories. Yeah. I think that'd be perfect. I, think I wouldn't Destiny want a main really character. Well. I wouldn't want the same person every time. I would want completely and, and, and different story. I don't you want to know want... about like Oryx growing up, not necessarily our fight with him. And, and like the Animatrix, you wouldn't want necessarily a resolution for everyone. You, some stories might end in a horrible situation, and it'll add more lore to that. You know, to that particular franchise. For me, there's a couple of games, and I want to give a shout out to my son for actually coming up with this topic. He came to my office and said, Dad, what about, do you like this topic? And I was like, yeah, let me see it. And I actually wrote it down. That's why it was an, an added bonus. Uh, but for me, there's a couple of games that come to mind that I would love to see. I'd love to see The Legend of Zelda as a film. Uh, I think that having something like The Breath of the Wild told in, in uh, true AAA style that stuck to the lore and done right, I think that would be amazing. I also think a game like um, uh, Bloodborne would be an incredible film. Uh, a game that my son uh, mentioned because he watched this when he played it was uh, Hellblade. Really dope, actually. Yeah, it would be an awesome film to see. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hellblade would be. How are be... they going to do that better though than you being interactive? Like, how are they going to? Yeah. How are they going to give you that experience of actually having mental illness better than how they did it? In the well, game? well, in the game, the only way that you, with us on the outside looking in, our perception was off. Like my son, we had a long discussion about this today. And I said, well, he said, well, does that mean that when you were fighting these enemies that they, they weren't what we thought they were? I said, sometimes they were and sometimes they probably weren't. And it would be the same way in a film, but the caveat to this to this topic is if it was done right. So that, that question goes out the window because theoretically it's going to be done right. You're going to experience it on film in a way that's different than most film. The same way that the game yeah. kind of showed us uh, a, a different take on third-person slasher adventure games, it was just a different take on it. You felt that you you had some kind of mental illness in this character, and you you really felt what being a schizophrenic person was like. You plot twist it like uh, Sixth Sense. You yeah, know what I mean, you make it look like all, like a lot of the stuff, like the hallucinations and stuff, are actually real. And at the end, plot twist, they weren't real. It was all in yeah. someone's head. I, I mean, Bruce, I don't know. Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. If you God spoilers. damn it, I I was it's on my Netflix queue, Beastly. Sorry, oh. Brian. I think as well, if you I made it if you're thinking fifteen years without spoiling that movie, <laughs> if you're thinking specifically, <laughs> he, he um, was waiting before Netflix came out, waiting to. <laughs> if you're thinking specifically storyline as well, and you're trying to make a movie, I think you need to stray away from the AAA space as well. So, me personally, a mm. ton of indie games indie. I think would make great movies because the indie games don't have the visuals um, to kind of tell their story effectively Little through nightmares. the video game medium. But something like Video Nightmares, but Oxenfree, which I spoke about a few weeks ago about how fantastic it is. I come back to Oxenfree again after watching Stranger Things with the whole communication through the radios and radio waves. Oxenfree is that. It's a fantastic story about, you know, the supernatural and communicating through radios. And I think it would work equally as well as something like Stranger Things did um, if told through medium. So anyone that's played Oxenfree will probably pick that up. Um, as well. I mean, do you guys have any indie games that you'd like to see? I mean, you mentioned Little Nightmares, basically. Anything that you think there? That would be great, man. Imagine if it's done uh, in maybe the Nightmare Before Christmas style, you know? Yeah. With that type of, uh, what is it, stop motion style uh, animation? Yes. If they did that for maybe the Little Nightmare story and, and, and you watch this, you know, little girl go through that, you know, horrible situation very similar to Spirited Away, to me, that'd be a great film. But something that I think would need it's not a trip, not a, um, an indie, but a triple A, but it, it couldn't be done on an indie budget would be like horizon zero dawn. Who would want to see that on film? I think that would be incredible to watch. Here's I've already seen it on film. Man. My problem is, is that every time somebody mentions a game and uh, like, as soon as you started talking indie, I instantly started thinking about, was it called this war of mine? That world war one game? Yeah. 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 I was like, Oh, that, that game would make a great movie. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like I already experienced that story and I was part of that story. Like, how are they going to, you know, improve on that? How are they going to improve on the the story of Horizon Zero Dawn? Like, I, I went through that with that character. I was a part of that. I fought beside her. I was there. I was a participant. Anytime they move that into a movie theater and I'm just sitting there watching it, it's not as good an experience. And I'm, Like, that's why I don't want any of these to happen. So you don't think that video games to film is a good idea in general? No, I think it's a terrible idea in general. Because it's 
you're taking something that was meant to be an interactive experience and making it a passive one, and it just feels it feels like it's missing something every time. Mm. I think there's very few examples of them doing it right. All right. What about if I add uh, a little bit of spice to, to mix it? <laughs> to make it what nice. About, what about gal gun? Double happiness, right? What about if you're snapping panties? How could they translate that to a film? I'd watch a film about it, to be fair. They already Sit, have. I'll send too. you a link. <laughs> there's they? a lot of them, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they all end the same way. I'm not... Well, well Briar, one that, actually, <laughs> one, one that actually... I never make it to the ending. I'm normally finished <laughs> after about one minute and 47 seconds. Exactly. You really didn't miss much. You got the gist of it. Like... It's done. One minute and 47 with... seconds. Something to clean up and a deep feeling of shame and self pity. <laughs> I think I think that's why uh, I like uh, Wilson's idea so much. Is that if they did side stories of like Devram K and like these side characters, like it would serve to like, enrich the story, the yeah. lore, but it wouldn't actually mess with the timeline and the storyline that I actually participated in. I find that much more attractive. There's certain games that you could actually do it for main characters that w- that would. It would only be a net positive. Games like Overwatch. They did I think a that's a crazy statement. That's the second dumbest thing I've heard you ever say. How can you <laughs> say it only be a net positive? Have you seen well, video game movies? I was joking around uh, before. Yeah. No. To say it only be a net positive, almost every video game movie has come out is terrible. Let, let me put it Let me put it in the context. I, let me I put it in, in the context, Briar. Have you seen the Overwatch short films? If they allowed yeah. the development of those films to be put into a two hour f- movie about those characters made by the same people, it would be a net positive because people like, people watch those films. You're and right love about that. Those films. You're right about that. But so take it back. Okay. I'll take it back, but not <laughs> the first time when you said that about Tucker Carlson, <laughs> <laughs> I take it back because you were right about overwatch, but overwatch is a specific example where That's what I the said. only story that you get is through those. Right? It's like That's why get, I said there's certain types of games. You get a clip or that. two. You get a clip or two from gameplay, but very little. Most of what we know about those characters is actually come from passive content. So that's mm-hmm. a specific example that I think you're, you're actually right about. But for the most part, I, I'm going to stand by my statement. It's like I don't want what I've experienced and participated in kind of sullied by some shitty movie. I think like I think some things will work for a movie like. Halo just kind of had like that charm. Like they actually did do some live action series that were actually really fucking cool. Like they were really awesome. The books, amazing. Like if you could tell a story with words, you could tell a story with pictures, in my opinion. It just needs to be done right. Like, yeah. and you, some of these movies are probably really ambitious. You know what I mean? As far as like funding, you know what I mean? When you got people going into space and there's a thousand alien ships showing up and there's explosions and all this stuff, like that's money. Even if it's like CG, like even if it's computer done, CG you're still spending more money. It's yeah. probably it's probably less expensive to actually dump gas on it and set it on fire than it is to CG fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like some of these things are probably just extremely ambitious. And I think that they know with the past that people, the way they have approached video game movies, that they're just like, uh, if we don't do this to a fucking T. These nerds are just going to rip us up. And we're notorious for that. We're, we're alpha nerds, no, man. Like, like, actually, Greedo shot first. You know, I, like, I feel everyone... like games would benefit more from actually taking yourself out. So I, I've, I've said it several times on, on the show. I'm not a fan of The Last of Us game. I am a huge fan of The Last of Us story. I see you there, Beastly. Um, for me... It's I, I would happily watch a YouTube cut together of all the CGI cutscenes of The Last of Us. And I feel like the gameplay is one of the slowest, most cumbersome elements. And I was playing it to get to the next cutscene. I feel like you could tell the story of Joel and Ellie perfectly because I felt like I was watching a movie anyway. So that story could be perfectly told through the through the medium of, of film without having to be this peripheral story about clickers and God knows what else. That's fine if they had started that way, but now that I've played with Joel and Ellie, right? Now that I've been through that experience and been a participant of it, if they were to retell that story on film, and anything it just wouldn't be the same. Yeah, if anything changes, you're going to have an issue. That's it's why not even about something changes. Like they I've read books and have them and and watch movies based on those books or Game of Thrones I think is a perfect example, right? I prefer the TV show to reading the books. It's it's easier, it's more fun, and I get the gist of everything that's happening. It's fine by me. 
And plus, the guy doesn't write the fucking books, so the TV series is ahead of the books at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's not even about that. It's it's about the interactivity of it and like being there. It's like to pull me to then like remove that aspect of it for me is just it. It's so hard. It's so hard. Well, do you think like I mentioned it earlier? It would have to be a certain type of game. Do you think Bloodborne would be a good game for a film? Being that the character that there's very little I story it'd be a good told. Setting. I think it'd be a good setting. Yeah. I you mean, know, it's just just, ca- it'd be like it's just such a cool place for uh, for content to happen, and I don't really feel any connection to any of the characters. In Bloodborne, yeah, that's what I'm so. saying. Me neither. It's almost like your own story, and it would, it would make work. an amazing anime. Oh man, it would. You could go oh, any direction with it that you wanted to. You you could have it episode to episode. You know what I mean? You wouldn't even have to make a movie out of it. You could just do it episode for episode. And you, I think a lot of the... Do you prefer TV series to movies at this point? <clears throat> yeah, 100%. Yeah. The last actual movie, like when me and Sam went out and saw a movie, was Jurassic World. Before that was Jurassic Park when they had brought it back in 3D. And, I mean, it's just like movies just don't do it for me anymore, man. Netflix and Amazon have been fucking killing it. AMC's always been killing it. HBO, like... They're really stepping up, you know what I mean? And I think like they're kind of picking up some of the slack. Like, like the, the Hollywood scene is a whole nother fucking topic for another <laughs> we need to day. Talk about but that I don't. Day too, yeah. I don't think it's what it used to be, man. And you I know, don't I, think it's. I, I, go I've, ahead. I've seen that act that in myself lately as well. So I, when I go on Netflix or something, I'll be looking for a TV show to watch as opposed to uh, a movie. A movie. Because yeah. I find more enjoyment mm-hmm. out of having like a consistent storyline with characters that I know and mm-hmm. seeing them develop. And TV has just gotten so good over the last few years with like, you know, Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, Man, the High Castle. So many amazing yeah. TV shows have come out in the last ten mm-hmm. years that the the bar has really raised. And there's great films that come out. Like I, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. There's all sorts of great movies that come out. But I mean, you just get so it's, invested in a TV. It is a great example, right? Uh, Stephen King's It that came out this year. It was a great movie. I went and saw it, talked to you guys about it. Really loved it, but I didn't love it as much as um, what is it? The the Netflix kids show? It's not really kids. For some reason, it's Dora it's the Explorer. Yeah, that show is so awesome. When you go to the the Nether Realm or the uh, the Upside Down, Briar Stranger fucking things. Dora, Stranger Things. <laughs> God damn it, Dora the fucking Explorer. Stranger Things, it felt like a similar world, but it was just so much more of it. It's like if you go to see a movie, you know, if even That's if it's right. a film you really like, it's over in two hours. But a TV show, you, you got 10, you 12 see, hours of it. For me, I feel like I, I am actively put off by the length of series um, and two reasons actually for it. Like a lot of the time I feel like, oh, fuck, there's like six seven seasons i'm never going to get through this and you guys you're americans you make like 23 episode seasons like it's fucking crazy <laughs> like in britain you get six on the bbc like six episodes that's or a season four or oh, like luther six that's like so- 10 yeah, is a it's... good round so number 10 that yeah. is ten one perfect. detractor the second thing is i feel like the quality of a show detracts the more seasons go on i feel like they start to drag it out and they lose it so stranger things was a good example because i've literally just today finished watching season two and i everyone was hyping season two like oh it's so much better so much i felt like it was the difference between alien one and aliens stranger things one was like a horror fit kind of horror ish you know there was this this um demonic presence or there was a there was an issue that needed to be resolved whereas stranger things 2 i felt like went into like there's lots of things happening and many things need to be resolved and it kind of went more popcorn action movie style and mm-hmm. i felt like it i didn't enjoy it half as much but i'm not going into that because that's kind of spoiler territory for me like movies i went and saw thor ragnarok last week um went on my own actually um i had the day off work and i just thought i'll go to see thor ragnarok in the morning no Loved friends it. huh well, no one's out at like. Are you surprised, Brian? <laughs> can't be seen in public with his console friends. Ten a.m. on Thursday. PC. No one's coming to see movies cool. with me anyway. He's with me. He owns a PC. PC. It's cool. <laughs> you get a game. Walks right people wrong. outside his house and says, "Hello, have you got a PC?" And they go, "What? Have you got a PC?" He say, "No, I've got a PS4." He said, "Get out of it, fucker!" And that's what happens with Gary. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, great movie. I fucking loved it. Perfect. I'd much rather have sat down and given that almost three hours of my time or two and a half hours, whatever it is, than watch another 10 hours of, of Netflix, but personally. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I can't wait. It's got to be good movie. stuff. Like I, I, my bar for what I'll watch on, for TV has gotten so high at this point that if it's not, if it's not immediately fucking amazing, like t- I, uh, tin badge, tin star. I think I just watched and it was like the first episode. It was Dora the Explorer. The uh, the cops, it's, the cops fucking kid gets shot. It's like, oh, this is a way to start a fucking series. <laughs> so, like, Damn. you know, it's just amazing, like, how fucking far they'll go. I don't know. Like, you're right. Movies, movies are great, and they're bite-sized experiences. But I, I like the series because I feel like I can sink my teeth in a little bit more. What's the next for uh, topics? I feel like we really went fucking crazy on that one. Supernatural is all-consuming and all wonderful, Hugo. I, I, I don't know if we have uh, much more. Is that it? I think- we yeah, we've, 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 we've we almost kind of exhausted already, it. Yeah, we've already went over this kind of at the beginning. Uh, it was talking about game of the year, categories, oh, yeah. timing, format, and what else. We kind of went over that earlier, so I don't know if you want to jump back into it again. No, I think no. it's just reiterating to the to the viewers that we'd like your suggestions, five suggestions for game of the year. Yes. So in the comments section, wherever you find them, be it um, you know, on YouTube or if you want to leave us comments on the, the Podbean or on the iTunes um, upload, your five your five titles for game of the year. Um, or if you don't have five, less and then why you chose them would also be good. Help us so that we can read them and we can come up with our own fives because I think we're going to have difficult... It's going to be really good games that we Narrowing forget. it down to five... It's going to be hard this year. Hard. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it will. So that will be good. If you guys can help us out and remind us of the five great games that there were, um, because there's been so many, you know, we might miss one. So it'd be good to get some it's comments there. It's all up to you guys. Make Revolver great again. We need to find out exactly what you mm. guys... Well, we, I think we're already fucking great, to be totally honest. What five games should we vote on, guys? What game should we vote on? Let us know in the comments. Uh, RevolverGamesCast at gmail.com. Go there. Let us know in the comments on iTunes or Podbean. What do you guys want us to vote on? All right. I think that's going to wrap up the show. We got – it's an hour and 52. We got like eight minutes of free time that we didn't have last week. This is our own time to spend however you see fit. Eight minutes. It's like a vacation. It's like getting Can the we- day off early. Can I, I watch talking, you guys? You'd have nine minutes. Now we were down like seven minutes, so I'm sorry. Let's get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Can I um, can I give a little treat to? Actually, I don't, I don't know how it's going. Don't eat right. into no, my seven not. minutes, Gary. He no. did his, <laughs> this is time where Briar could be blowing doom. Or we could somehow. Is this going to work? Could we share this image? I, I kind of feel like the viewers need to need to see what Wilson drew I cannot on this. Share an image. You'll have to do it on Twitter. Is it not going to work? No. Okay. Never mind. And the phone won't work. That will just die, won't it? That's just going to be white. No. I, I feel like the viewers need to see it. Somehow we need to share that. I think I'm going to screen cap it and put it in there. So for anyone that's listened this long, please um, check out the the Twitter that's going to be bouncing between all of us. And it's probably a good time to find out where we can find us all on Twitter. So, Briar, do you want to head up? Where can we find you on the internet? I am at the Briar Rabbit. Uh, you can find me there on Twitter. <laughs> I am at beast. <laughs> Nowhere else. Just, just there. Twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. You can find him there or his YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Briar Rabbit. We're down to five minutes. Five minutes of free time. It's his fault, Briar. <laughs> you can catch me on Twitter at beastly underscore underscore gamer or the beastly gamer YouTube channel. I'm at both places 24 hours a day. Hit me up on Twitter. Tell me how much you love me or how much I was wrong today. It doesn't matter to me. Easily, you can find me on Twitter at Ree Wilson. Um, and apparently, um, keep an eye out because I'm going to have to defend myself against this uh, graffiti that was in my topic space. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll put me on trial or something. <laughs> so Somebody toxic. could be the judge. Wilson, Someone so could toxic. be the jury. He could. Gary can Super. be. What about? I'd be the defendant. <laughs> Beastly could be the judge. Briar could be the jury. Actually, no, Briar's the judge. Beastly's the jury. I trust uh, him can more. Can I just be the executioner? Could be all Called the it. above. Called it. I killed Somebody's him in the revolver killed. thing, so I need to do it. That dick was so detailed, Gary. I cannot believe you drew that. So vain. I didn't draw anything, man. He copied and pasted that shit. Gary's never seen a dick that big. <laughs> Certainly not here. It's, it's sad. I'm, said. I'm crying inside because it's true. <laughs> Well, where can uh, they find you crying at, Gary? Yeah. 
They can find me crying at uh, <laughs> Gary Diaz 86 underscore BT, which we've now universally decided is Beastly's Twink. Beastly's Twink, yes. <laughs> Beastly's Twink. <laughs> Universal. No <laughs> questions. <laughs> so good. Sounds so much better than Big Thug, and I tell you. I know, I know. If you want to know what Twink stands for, I'm not even going to tell you. Please Google Twink on the internet. Oh, don't do yes, that. Please do. Don't sure do, it. do it in the Google image search, though. Don't don't wait for the text shit. <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> not safe for work. Disclaimer, not safe Depends for work. Depends on where you work. <laughs> it's safe for my work. Oh, my God. Well, so where can we find you? I already said you can find me oh. on Twitter at Reed Wilson. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap it up. We got free time. Thank up. you guys for hanging out. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Thank you guys. It's been fun. <laughs>